come. Um, if you can't tell from that shot, I'm in Wellington and I'm on my way to pick up the Holden at last. Been in the South Island for the last two weeks, so it was actually perfect timing that it was ready as soon as I jumped off the ferry. So I'll be there in about 10 minutes, fill you in on what's gone down and um, I'm excited to drive it again. It was 0.5 over, 
um, pistons, basically just went to town. Now this is a monster engine package. This is essentially rated to like a thousand horsepower plus. Obviously you're not going to achieve that without boost. So as much as I really wanted to supercharge it and it would make huge numbers with me selling it and everything obviously it just, I couldn't really justify it. Although it was hard to know because there's no others supercharged for sale. Couldn't get an idea on if it would up the value or not. Maybe it would have, I don't know. If I was keeping the car, I 100% would have supercharged it. It would have been absolutely mental. So as for um, dyno numbers and stuff, it actually made 30-ish horsepower less than before. So they use a mainline dyno. Um, the previous tune was on a Dynapack. Main lines, most people know, they're called the Heartbreaker. They read a lot less and it's a very true reading. But it just goes to show that numbers mean absolutely nothing because even with a lower reading, it is 100% more powerful. So yeah, I'm very, very stoked that it's um, done. I'm very happy with the end result. I can't thank Llama enough. There was no reason at all for me to go all out like this considering I'm selling a car. Obviously, most people would have just done the cheapest option possible so they could flick the car on. But a car of this value, I didn't want to skimp out. I wanted the next owner to be happy with what they're getting. There's just no way someone's going to buy a car of this value without um, receipts and, you know, proof of a reputable workshop. Lama have a very good reputation, so I couldn't have gone to a better place. Their work speaks for itself. Obviously in Speedway they've got some very competitive cars they've built. Not only that, they do absolutely everything. Circuit cars, drift cars, drag cars, burnout cars. The second I walked in there I knew I was at the right place because I don't think I've ever had customer service that great. Appreciate if you guys go like their pages, Instagram and Facebook. And if you do happen to need any stuff done on your vehicle, whether it be fabrication, uh, machining, anything, they do it all. Man, I so want to keep this car now, but I've got bigger plans, so I still will be selling it. I'm actually almost in Hastings, where I'm going to stop in at Stephen Hill. They probably sell the most Holden Performance V8s in the country. I'm just going to pop in there, just out of curiosity, to see what they'll actually pay for this. Honestly, whoever buys this now, this is the deal of the century like you will not buy one standard and build it for anywhere near this price snap a supercharger on and bob's your auntie seven eight hundred horsepower easy as so you'll be wondering um what the substance was on the pickup in the previous video now this is the biggest mystery ever these guys have been in the business for a long long time very experienced guys at llama and they had never seen it before um also got the oil sample back that didn't really say anything i just had to. they even talked to motul and a few other guys and no one had seen it before all they could say is it definitely looks like someone has put something in there some sort of additive and it's reacted no engine just grows shit randomly and blocks the pickup like that especially a substance like that yes if you don't do regular oil changes it'll block but it wasn't anything like that and a lot of people are saying a bunch of different stuff was it the workshop glove in there all sorts of stuff tape it definitely wasn't any of that that's a cop not what i do about that thing he gave me the look Stephen Hill sounds uh, kind of promising they said they uh, definitely want to buy it um, so they're gonna let me know next week on a price I basically said what I'm after so I'm sticking to that after all that's been spent on it and I know how much I can get so I'm not getting finessed so we'll see what happens quite a few people that wanted to buy it and were going to buy it um, you may have noticed that it doesn't have my personalized plates on anymore because I probably had three or four people that were dead set on buying it and then just stuffed around like, if you're not going to buy a vehicle don't say you're going to buy it and muck the person around because 
I took my personalised plate off for no reason. The guy was ringing me non-stop saying, yep, yep, I'm coming tomorrow. I said, sweet, I got it all ready, took the plate off and everything. And then the night before says, oh, um, no, I can't get insurance on it. I was just like, wouldn't you check that first? And then there was another guy that was dead selling that said the similar stuff. And then he said, oh, I ended up buying one the same from blah, blah. I knew the one which he bought. He paid the same price as what I wanted for one that was completely stock and had higher case. It's just like, how are people so stupid? came here and he ran out of diesel right here on the spot didn't, didn't even turn the key off I literally pulled in here and I pulled up and then I hopped out I was gonna leave it running hopped out dropped the jack off I was like fuck the truck's not right I didn't think I turned it off in next minute out of diesel <laughs> I've done it a few times now but we only got like a liter out of this truck. yeah so <laughs> tried to siphon this thing in the Last time I done in my Hilux, I had to take the lines off and everything. She ain't gonna prime. <laughs> go, go, go! It's gonna die! <laughs> He's got like half a litre. <laughs> Or just gonna run out on the way there. Here's the beast if you will. But anyway, there wasn't actually much to record. This video was probably a bit too much talking. I actually cut a lot out because I felt it was gonna be pretty boring. But at the same time, I kind of had to explain stuff because I knew people would be asking a bunch of stuff. I should probably make a start on doing something about this thing. I've got quite a bit of things that have turned up. I haven't touched it since the last event, which was like three, four months ago. Listen to this. If anyone wants a mint buy, I actually will swap that for a PX2 Upranger or a Hilux with obviously cash my way. I'm uh, gonna go check up on Kudo's progress on his um, HZ. He's done quite a bit since the last video, so go check it out. Jesus, boy. What are you doing now? Painting. All the under, underneath. All the chassis, arms. Just finished putting the top coat on them. Sanded them all back. Primed them. Um, epoxy. Top coat. Ready to go now. Need to rebush them. Oh, you pressed most of the bushes out? Yeah, I've got them all out here. Foo wee. Yep. The whole chassis out. Yeah. <laughs> well, that comes up pretty mean, eh? Yeah. Now as I see a sand right back with wire brush and then sandpaper. Your lawn's gonna be dead. Never mind the lawn, we got a car to build. Yeah. How much? 500. For all those? Yeah. Tie rod right ends, all the joints. Is that just the front or rear as well? Front, just the front, yeah. Boy, this thing is gonna be fresh. Pretty cheap. Yeah, I mean, so everything's gonna be brand new on the front end really. Well. Any new shops for it, cause they were stuff, so. Show us this thing because some new shops. What have, what have you done since the last uh, video? No. Basically, ready to go for paint, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Just got to do a couple more areas. Beer metal, and then epoxied over, so it's ready to be bogged, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fucking had the dirty job of laying on my back, under ceiling, all under there. 
Oh boy. Yeah. Oh, that came up nice too. Yeah. To think that this was pretty rusty all over mm -hmm. before. So it's got yeah, that front panel to do, sand that all back. Just those couple of pillars. So I've done a little bit of work in the wheel arch. I'm going to take the fuel tank out and do the same. Sand it all back and underseal it again. And then what will we heading to Thames? Yeah. Hopefully James. in a few weeks time, head to James. It's not too far off to be quite honest. It's not that much work left to get it to paint this bit of bog. But I've been hammering all the panels out by hammer. So I don't have to put too much bog into it. Yeah. Yeah, it's come up pretty straight really. Yeah. You know, yeah, considering how many patches and stuff went into it. Yeah, well, quite a few people would have saw the guards on my Instagram. Just scraping all the bog off. It was honestly like inch, centimetre thick. And then, yeah, scraped it all off and tapped them all out. And they're good to go now. Just goes to show the difference. People not doing stuff properly. Yeah, the old man was, obviously this was his trade. And he was like, nah, I'm not doing bog. I'm panel beating it, so... He got his hammer and dolly out and showed me how to do it, so it's come up pretty good. Good stuff, all right. That's a mess in here, so. But all the doors are done, boot, bonnet, guards. Jesus. All, all ready to rock. Real? Nah, it's, I need one. If anyone has one, straight up hook me up, I'll buy it. <laughs> nah, that's off a Cortina, I think, need to sell it. Oh, yeah, this one here come up a bit. Something happened to the paint, or there was something. It's come up out of it as but what well, the like texture, the yeah, finish. Oh, but it was just like going on out of it, and Dad didn't know, so I just sent it anyway, and then I was have to sand it back. But yeah, then it's that, a pretty mean flag there too. Yeah, and then that she's fucking ready to be bald. So yeah, um. Drop a comment and on what colour you think he should go. He's got a few ideas, but see what you guys think.